stage of transporting an obelisk wasn't easier than its previous one, the cutting, or its following step, which is the erection. Especially that the Egyptian didn't leave behind any historical reference about that stage. To imagine the operation, we must figure out the designated course. After removing the obelisk from the quarry, a road should be prepared there to drag it to the ground level, then to the Nile bank, then to the temple where it will be erected. This means that part of the journey is by land and the other is by river. It's clear that the Egyptian considered the nature of the ground used in dragging in all stages, and the nature of the river regarding the speed of the wind and the weight of the obelisk and the number of supervisors and workers and sailors who'll do the job. The land transportation depended on two main ways, the coaster and the massive rounded blocks of wood. In addition to man and bull's power, the coaster was used for smaller tasks like transporting statues, so the wooden trunks were used to move the obelisks. After determining the size and weight of the obelisk, the number of wooden bars and distances between them were fixed. With the help of cranes, the trunks were placed underneath the obelisk, which would be pulled at the front by people and oxen, and pushed from the back until it reaches the shore. The path from the quarry to the Nile was paved, and certain liquids were thrown on the ground to prevent the friction between the body of the obelisk and the floor, which might result in sparks and fire. It's also possible to imagine the care with which each of these steps was done in favor of the cult of Amun.